Hmm. Okay, why don't we get started? Um, so the last uh, the last meeting we had, we had a presentation of Chu Bao Affairs, um, which uh, was presented by um, the team at JD.com. Um, now, as as part of that presentation, I was concerned that um, we didn't really have much of a process for sort of collecting information out of a out of a, from a project and kind of um, making sure that we capture at least you know a minimum baseline of information for for a project and and we we're um, so, so I put a I put a questionnaire together, which is shared in the in the agenda, which I would really love. Um, I would really love to have some feedback on that. Um, so far, Xing and and Aaron have have given some feedback, which was um, very much appreciated. And I also shared it to the TOC threads, where um, uh, where Brendan was was. Uh, sort of documenting the uh, the workflow for for sort of toc presentations um but but this is this is kind of an issue which which comes up um fairly often um either um you know and the symptoms are that either you know something gets moved into sandbox but then you know questions arise after it has moved into sandbox or um, the project does a TOC presentation and there are sort of questions that they're not prepared for or that they haven't answered. So hopefully by going through the, the, the SIG review, um, we'll, we'll, we'll nail a couple of those things up front um, and, by, and by capturing the, the information in the questionnaire, um, we'll, we'll also, you know, make sh kind of use that as a, as, a, as a baseline, but also kind of gives us the ability to sort of review changes over time, especially when we have to do sort of six monthly reviews or, 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 um, or graduation type reviews or incubation type reviews. So um, unless there's, unless there's, um, um, unless we have any more sort of feedback, I would like to propose um, sending this to Chris Anacek to to raise at the next talk meeting to kind of formalize this a little better because it's it's the sort of thing which which we should probably standardize across all of the SIGs um, and, and and across the talk as a as a way of of sort of reviewing um, these sandbox projects. Any objection to that? I think this seems like a very reasonable thing for the SIGs to do. Uh, is there in the proposal, any sort of binding uh, kind of enforcement that you have to go through with SIG, or is it more of a suggestion or recommendation? Um, so, 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 so I actually, sorry, go on. Go ahead, Alex. Um, so, so I had a, I had a brief conversation with, with Chris Anishak around this, um, um, and as a case in point, Longhorn got um, slightly confused and they weren't sure who to present to first. So we um, we sort of had a, a brief chat and, and, and Chris is of the opinion that the projects really should present to the SIG first. Um, if, you know, if for nothing else, because it gives them that, that opportunity to prepare and to, um, and to collate the required information and kind of have that first round of questions before, before they hit the, 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 the TOC call. Um, so, so that seems to be the recommendation. I, I don't know that we're sort of encoding that as a, like, thou shalt not kind of thing, but um, that, that seems to be the, the, the workflow that, that, uh, that they would like to adopt. Yeah, I mean, it's up to the TOC at the end of the day, but I, I, the TOC read, you know, agreed with the SIGS proposal, and the SIGS proposal says that that's how it works. So uh, I can't imagine there being any objections. The one sort of procedural problem at the moment is we don't have all the SIGs set up yet. So if there is a project that doesn't fall within one or one of the two or three SIGs that are kind of formed, uh, then, then, you know, what do they do then is the question, but that's a temporary situation, I believe. Yeah, it seems like a right st step in the right direction. Yeah, I think so. I think the intention is to have all the SIGs set up by the end of the year. Um, so, you know, at that point, the problem should go away. 
yeah i i, I think as a high as a high level objective we want we want to i think the the idea is to have most of the six set up before the next cube con so yeah. there is a different problem just to mention it briefly it's not really the to do with storage specifically but but it's come to me at my attention that there are certain areas which we think are part of the CNCF's mandate, but but none of the SIGs seem to think it's their mandate. So, so we have some holes, some gaps between what we think covers the CNCF and what the SIGs cover. Um, the one that came to mind is, you know, application development, um, which seems, you know, fairly clearly to be within the ambit of the CNCF, but the SIG apps, people don't necessarily want it, in which case, where does it fall? Yeah, so there are there are some challenges. I, I kind of believe really firmly in sort of identifying our area of influence and our area of concern. And every time the area of concern goes way beyond the area of influence, that's probably a good indicator to step back and um, make it somebody else's problem because I think we, we kind of have enough to to um, to to work on as it is if you see what I mean I mean I, I don't know if you disagree with that no no I totally agree uh, I just brought it up as a, as a general problem I and mean, we have a sort of a similar thing with this group in that uh, you know we're storage databases are a form of storage we haven't really covered databases in the white paper yet I think we have agreed that we will cover databases in general um, so if a database comes to the CNCF, they should get vectored to storage. I just want to make sure we're comfortable and clear about that. Actually, that is a very good point. So um, it wasn't in the agenda originally, but do we want to um, to alter uh, a database section for the white paper? I think that was always the intention. We just ran out of time and it was too big to chew off in the first bite. <laughs> right. Maybe, um, <clears throat> you know, I'd, I'd love any, any, anybody who's on the call who, who fancies um, taking on this challenge. If you could put up your hand, that would be amazing. But um, otherwise, I am tempted to reach out to Sugu. Um, who's one of our tech leads, but he's also the guy between behind Vitesse. Um, so they might, he might be able to put some resource into that, or or maybe rope in a couple of other colleagues to to help. Yeah, I think it'd be a great starter project for um, one or two of the new tech leads or chairs. Erin, I don't know if you are able to get involved in that. Yeah, I am. And um, I was, before we moved on uh, topics, I had wanted to add, um, I talked to Liz last week as well about creating a new draft on sandbox expectations. Because if you read the charter back to what Saad was asking, it's pretty vague about those expectations. I like the idea of the, the survey for us SIGs helping us frame that better because right now we don't have well-crafted criteria. Um, you know, Quentin did an excellent job on the due diligence doc, but if you remember last year, we decided we weren't going to do due diligence on Sandbox, so therefore we don't really have a bar by which it's measured. And I think a lot of projects have expressed frustration about, you know, what they're being measured against, um, and especially nothing's time boxed, nothing's published. Um, it's well, so, so the sandbox is a, is a special case. Maybe I should just take the opportunity to clarify. So I think, I mean, without wanting to point fingers, I think some of the confusion is actually arises from Chris, um, because I think he has a different view of some of these things than the TOC has and had. But just to be clear, the reason why we don't do due diligences on sandbox projects is because there are no expectations. <laughs> That's kind of the definition of a sandbox project. Um, there doesn't actually have to be any project. There don't have to be any, you know, significant number of contributors. I think there's some confusion around, you know, I see Chris Anacek asking questions like, oh, do you have enough different companies contributing? That is explicitly a non-goal of the sandbox. The sandbox is created so that there can be a place for people to form such groups uh, and build such projects 
um, uh, within a you know a safe legal uh, environment where the IP is you know housed in a foundation and some of them are much more advanced than that some of them are you know happening projects with customers and users and lots of companies contributing and others are nothing more than an idea uh, and and the people or person with the idea is looking for a safe place to explore that idea um, yeah. so I mean so, Quentin, you and I yeah. have been on the CNCF for the same amount of time so I lived through the exact same thing you have the current TOC has not so when I say expectations maybe we call them non expectations because you're exactly right we have a lot of frustrated sandbox projects that they are being measured against that bar that is inappropriate perhaps and so we need to again level set what does it mean to be a sandbox project this goes back to the the survey that Alex was putting together um, and and defining those different areas more in like a easily set, where do you belong in the list? You know, are you just an idea? Do you have users? You know, is it sandbox or incubation? What are you trying to be measured against? Because it's, it's absolutely not clear to many of the people who are being proposed today is my concern. And that a project that went into sandbox 12 months ago compared to what's going on today is, is very different. So it was just meant to have, uh, a very consistent, uniform way that the TOC is looking at all these projects from TOC to TOC as that board changes. So that was my only concern. Is that people are seeing it as being fair? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there, there is a sandbox page and I have read it and I think it says pretty much exactly what I said. Um, so, 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 so I, I, I just, just to interject slightly. Um, so, the reason I put this the project questionnaire together was basically because there are two criteria that have to be satisfied to become a sandbox project. Really, at the end of the day, and that two criteria points are: you have to find two people from the talk to sponsor you, and you have to meet the uh, CNCF IP policy. So, um, so the idea behind the questionnaire and, and collecting some baseline information is basically an attempt to say, what does a TOC member need to know about a project or what would they like to know about a project to kind of put their hand up and say, yeah, I, I actually think I want to sponsor that. Um, and also to try and capture you know, any any potential, um, uh, you know, IP policy type uh, issues, which, or, or, or at least identify things that need to be looked at, because obviously there's a grace period on, on the IP policy, but, but sort of try and capture some of that information up front. So, you know, which repos are you using? What, what license model are you using? What dependencies do you have? How, how do you integrate with other CNCF projects? You know, any any of that type of information that gives a TOC member the information they need to to actually sponsor to make that decision to sponsor. And and I think that's that's probably what we need to do to level out the playing field because the the decision to sponsor varies greatly on the quality of the presentation and the information that's shared um, in in you know maybe a fifteen minute slot once a month. And and therefore making sure that the right information is available to make to allow the TOC to make their, their decision is, is probably the single most useful thing we can do to help sandbox projects right now. Yes, and with the the projects now coming to the SIG first, maybe there's more opportunity for exchange rather than that fifty minute presentation and, and there's pre sponsorship agreement, but um, I just think we have to projects brand new to the CNCF, not understanding the process, not understanding the people, not having the network, right, to be able to find the sponsors ahead of time. It, it just, I feel like there needs to be something that's absolutely clear, what is expected of them, what's, what is a great presentation, what that should be included, how they find sponsors, things like that. I don't think that's readily available in my opinion today. I, I love the idea of, the the survey for storage i think that will really help 
you know, new projects coming into Sandbox. So thank you. Yeah, I think I agree with Erin here. I, there's definitely room for improvement in this process. I, I agree with Quentin, a lot of it is documented, but there still remains a lot of confusion in the community about what it in, involves and what the differences are and how you get, how you go through the process, what is the process like, that kind of thing. So I, I think this is a step in the right direction, saying SIGs are going to be involved with this part of this kind of decision. Hopefully this process can evolve in the future and just bring kind of more transparency and openness and uh, it kind of make the whole overall process better. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, having, so, so the, you know, Quinton is right. The, the, the sandbox criteria are very clear and the stuff that's on the CNCF page is actually quite clear. But what, what we haven't defined is, um, some of the logistical elements, right? So, you know, it, it, in order to be fair, we, we should be at least collecting the same level of information out of each project, not sort of, you know, some projects get a grilling <laughs> and some projects get an easy ride just based on who happens to attend a call, for example. You know, so it, it, I, think, I think it's a good idea to just collect a standard set of information and have, you know, some basic workflow as to what the, what the steps to go through the process are. And, and I, I, I think I tried, I, you know, I did a first pass of trying to capture that in the, in the questionnaire uh, or the survey. Um, but, you know, if anybody thinks, you know, if anybody has any idea, ideas to make that better, now's, now's the time to do it. Because what I'd really like to do is use this, um, this survey and kind of test the process with Chabu FS, who have already presented to us, um, and I've asked Way to to um, to fill in the information for, on the survey, um, and we also have the Longhorn presentation, which is coming up um, uh, in two weeks, um, and I'd and and I'd like to use the survey again to collect this information and then use that as a prototype, so we can share that with the talk and say, this is the information we collected with the project. This is the sponsorship they're looking for. You know, this is. Um, this is a, a copy of the deck and whatever else, and, and you know the, the the talk can have that information before before they even get to the point where the the project presents to the talk. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a brief and probably slightly contentious statement, but I, I actually think reading between the lines of what Saad and and uh, Aaron have said, it sounds like projects are basically being messed around um, and by you know the CNCF uh, and and the TOC and I think that we might have to educate the CNCF and the TOC rather than uh, be clearer to the projects because I think the requirements of the projects are fairly clear I think the problem is they're not being held to those requirements um, and I've, I've come across anecdotally quite a few examples where, you know, there's supposed to be a backlog of presentations and that backlog doesn't actually get stuck to. Uh, it's somewhat arbitrary who gets chosen to present on a given day and people get frustrated because they asked, you know, long, long ago and they still haven't been scheduled. And somebody, I, w I was one of them, came along and, you know, I just got shoved in the front of the list um, for no apparent reason. Um, and so if I was a project and that happened to me, I would get frustrated too. And then I saw a question yesterday about a project, whether it had sufficient uh, dif diversity of company contributions for uh, incubation. And that, that's not even a requirement for incubation. So the person who uh, is a staff of the CNCF who asked that question clearly does not know the basic criteria for the different levels. So, and, and if you're a project and you now get asked why don't you have multiple projects, uh, sorry, companies contrib contributing to your project from the staff of the CNCF, uh, when in fact that is not a criteria, you can, a criterion, you can quite imagine that there will be frustration and confusion. And I don't think it's because what's written down is incorrect or unclear. I think it's just not being understood by the people actually enforcing it. Yes, I, I I would look. I would agree with all of that. I I, I think there is there is some you know educa internal education to happen, but so know, let's start there and take what we have and make sure that the people who are enforcing what we have have act are actually aware of what that is because I think they're not, and then we can 
you know, continue from there further if we need to. But it seems like that's actually the crux of the problem. Um, I could, yes, that, that is the crux of the problem. The crux of the problem is the TOC today, many of them, fantastic people, um, have not been involved in the CNCF prior to being there. So unaware of the transition of how things have changed, um, maybe some of the processes and overwhelmed with a backlog of projects. I think Amy's done a good job of actually getting them on the backlog now and scheduling things out. So, you know, her joining is, is definitely going to help, but I absolutely agree. There has to be a re-education and, and I feel like that would help projects as well because then everyone would be reading from the same playbook. Um, so that's all I want to get to. I just, I don't want the TOC or the CNCF perceived as being unfair. You know, that's, that, that's just the word I keep hearing. Like it's not oh, fair. Oh, I agree. So, so. so maybe to wrap this up, maybe, uh, I, I was involved in, in the sandbox stuff and I was involved in the SIG stuff. Um, would you like me to volunteer to present to the, uh, I'll speak to uh, Liz um, and, others on the TOC just to make sure they're comfortable with this, but I can present to them just a, to them and the broader audience, what the current status of the different criteria are just basically read the pages that are on the CNCF website and field questions. And um, I already talked with Liz about it. That's what I was getting at because I am uh, too involved in the sandbox, but I'm, I'm asking if you want to open that up as something that we go forward to the C, you know, cause I said, we need to step back, I feel like. And, and she agreed with all that I had to say, but um, however you want to handle it. Uh, oh, it sounded, like your, it sounded like your proposal was to educate the general public to, to change or, and or improve the documentation around that, or is, it not, is that not what it is? It's a little bit of both. Today, the sandbox stuff is, is okay documented, but it also doesn't have, um, there are a couple of things that I think can be improved and we should always look for continuous improvement. For instance, we don't have anything time boxed, right? Like we need to be able to have expectations to projects and also the TOC needs to be able to all asking the same questions and having their expectations correct for that. That's all. But Alex, I don't want to manipulate your take up. Your no, no, no. So, so, so look, here is, I mean, just my two cents. I, you know, I, I, all the education stuff matters, but I think, I, I really do believe that the basic thing that that's missing here is the logistics and the process. It's it's not you know what the criteria are or how it's run or what people you know people need to understand that a bit better. But but the logistics are are a problem, right? So if if a you know where does it say anywhere that if you're a sandbox project and you want to be considered by the CNCF, speak to your friendly SIG member. You know where does it where does it say what the SIG does once they've seen a, a project presentation? You know where where do do we how, how do we move on to the next step and and share that information with the talk yes. right? And 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 these were some of the dilemmas that, that that I was kind of struggling with when I put together the 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 that questionnaire in the survey because I, I was just thinking to myself, okay, so we've just had this Charbo FS presentation. Now what? How do we move this thing forward? And, and and I don't think that process is is sort of being discussed or written down anywhere, and and it doesn't need to be anything complex. So, you know, I just put it down as next steps, and there are five bullet points in my questionnaire. Um, so it, we 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 can kind of refine that slightly, but this sort of like basic logistics and basic process need, needs to be sorted out. So I'm going to try and push it from our point of view as a, as a SIG, because I think you know it should be made clear that if there are storage projects, they should be talking to the SIG. And once they've presented to the SIG, this is the set of information that needs to be collated. And then once that information is collated, this is how we're, this is the information we're going to give to the TOC, and then the, they can you know opt to sponsor it after having a TOC presentation. But but I think Erin is right. We we you know, the TOC should actually have some sort of process to say, this is how you get onto the list. You raise a PR here. And once you get on the list, you know, you, you'll be seen within three months or whatever, you know, and, and, and some, some basic process flow. Great. 
yeah, I, I agree. It's a procedural thing and, and going through SIG storage, one of the first SIGs and being able to help create and nurture that process, I think will be, will be real good. Cool. So, you know, as I said, let, let's try and capture any of this or, you know, put any more steps or any more process that, that you think we need into that survey document. I've already shared it with the, um, with the, with the TOC mailing list, but I'll sort of push it out again, kind of, with, with, a, with a bit of, with a bit of a blurb. Um, and I'll ping the co-chairs just to make sure that we've captured the, the blurb as we want it to be. Uh, one last thought, uh, Aaron. Um... It just occurred to me maybe that education of the TOC members and the CNCF staff um, about, uh, and to be clear, I think this problem exists way beyond the formation of SIGs. I think this existed before SIGs even existed, and, and I think it's, it is a genuine problem. Maybe we should have that in private, i.e. just the TOC and CNCF staff, not the general public just to give them a, a slightly more enclosed environment within which to you know ask ask questions argue about whether the stuff is correct or not etc um before we open it up to the broader world does, does that make sense what i'm asking yeah it makes sense um because i want to feel like they can candidly state i didn't understand that or that's you know i i don't want to make anyone feel like they're responsible or have done something wrong. Um, it, it's definitely been an, a transition, so I, I don't think that would, I think that would be beneficial. Okay, great. Uh, right, and, and just to be clear, I was not planning to step in. I, I thought you were actually proposing something different than what I was proposing, which is why I, I proposed it. But if you were proposing the same thing, um, then by all means, go ahead. We can do it together. Oh, okay. Everything <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. That sounds good. Excellent. Um, so then, uh, just moving on to the next thing, I'd like to um, uh, sort of open the floor to um, what we would like the, the CNCF webinar to be about. So, so we got a slot on the, um, on the 20th of August. Um, normally, a CNCF <coughs> webinar gets maybe about 500 registrations and, and probably about 200 odd attendees. Um, so, you know, it's 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 a decent enough audience. Um, so we should we should sort of try and make the, the topic as as impactful as possible. Um, any ideas off the top of your heads? We can we can also obviously also discuss this over email, but. What are these things? I, I haven't attended any of these webinars, and I don't even really know what a webinar is. Um, <laughs> what, <laughs> what, uh, what is the general focus been in the past of these things? Um, so they tend to have, you know, they tend to be a a particular topic. Um, there have been a couple of webinars in the past based on on um, uh, cloud native storage, for example. There has been there have been webinars around CSI in the past. Um, it's 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 basically up to CNCF members to, to sort of propose topics, um, and then the the, the CNCF um, sort of does the scheduling and the marketing of this webinar. So it goes out to the CNCF mailing lists, and people can sign up for it. And then it's kind of like a, a big video conference um, where uh, the presenter is present to to the people that that turn up. Okay, and, and how long is it generally? This is a, it's a 45 minute session. No, sorry, it's a, it's an hour and a bit. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's about an hour of presentation and, and about half an hour of, of, uh, of, this, of questions. So, so it's similar to, to a KubeCon presentation in, in some sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so obviously, we you know we we can 
we can we can use the opportunity to talk about some of the work that we're doing but it, it would kind of be great if we use the opportunity to um to educate people about you know maybe some cloud native storage topics one thing that crossed my mind earlier today was um so we've got this white paper, which is great, I think. And, and obviously one approach would be just to essentially present the same stuff again, but we've done that quite a few times. Another one would be to set out to use that as a tool to answer a hypothetical uh, question. So, you know, customer X has this storage use case. How do they go about figuring out what a good solution to that use case is would, would be a different angle on essentially similar information. So have we got any feedback from the survey? <laughs> um, so, okay, so let's, uh, let's segue briefly into that. So we, um, we had, we, we issued the survey just before KubeCon. Um, we only got five or six responses, so we oh. kind of decided not to use it. Um, and then yesterday, we we had gotten a slot on the end user forum, um, and and Quentin and I uh, were there, and we made a quick presentation to kind of solicit information. But there were only eight or nine people on the call, and to be honest, it was it was not a fantastic experience. Basically, question after question, and nobody would unmute themselves and actually talk or engage. So um, I don't know if it was that particular call, you know, maybe there was a, a poor turnout or whatever, but um, yeah, we, we, we don't have a, a lot of info. Um, we did we did speak to, um, oh, I forget her name now. Um, uh, the lady that, uh, sitting in for Cheryl um, yesterday and she was going to email out to the, to the forum which, which I believe has about 300 members on the list um, mm -hmm. with the survey again. Um, okay. But I, I, I haven't checked today if there have been any more submissions. Um, but last time when it was sent out, it was they sent out to the same list? Yes. Mm. But it yeah, was so that's not, probably not going to result in what we're looking for. Pro, Possibly not. When, when we sent that last time, though, we, we had asked people to reply before KubeCon. So maybe if this is a more open time frame, we might get a few more. But I agree, we're probably not going to get that many. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think we put a lot of effort into that questionnaire. And I actually think it's a very good questionnaire. Um, I think we should, we should just execute and, and without necessarily the tight timeline, uh, we should actually just get it out to Kubernetes, you know, SIG storage, um, and as many other of those mailing lists as we think might be necessary. I'll give it months or whatever the right amount of time is. Um, that's a that's a good point. So, shall we shall we send that to to wider audiences then? Yeah, I think that will be helpful. Because people, even vendor got them, they can send it out to their customers to fill out, right? So we'll get more responses. Yes, that is a good point. All right, so how about this? I could craft an email for, um, to send out to the, to our working, to our SIG, which, which would capture at least a few vendors and encourage them uh, put some. Put, uh, I'm, I'm, I'll try to put a boilerplate email out so that maybe they could send it out to to some of their customers, um, and um, and maybe Jing or or Saad, could you send it to the Kubernetes SIG storage perhaps? Yeah. Sure. Yep. Feel free. Cool. All right. Quite a few active Slack channels. CNCF has some, they're not storage specific, but, but they're pretty active, seem to have thousands of people on there. So it probably wouldn't hurt to just put it out there as well. All right, I'll do that too. Um, cool. But hey in the guys, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm late. Oh, hey, hey Luis. Um, 
so in the meantime, uh, so Luis, actually, we were, we were just discussing the, the the webinar for those slots that you uh, that you managed to secure. Um, we we were just um, about to start talking about what uh, options we could discuss in the webinar. Did you oh, have any special? Did you have any specific ideas? Because we were drawing a bit. Yeah. Of a um, one of the questions that I, I get asked by customers a lot is um, what type of storage to use, what type of application. Um, a, a lot of, you know, uh, customers, you know, they have a certain type of application database or, 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 you know, some type of file system or something in AI. We, they just don't know exactly what's the best uh, type of storage to use, uh, what replicas to use, things like that. Um, I, I just feel like we could move towards that direction. It's just my suggestion. So, so actually, um, that's sort of similar to what to what uh, Quinton suggested, um, and maybe that that plays out well. So, if we use if we use the stuff that we had put together in the white paper, and we we could sort of um, role play a few scenarios to kind of say okay using you know if a, if if somebody wants to run a database or somebody wants to do machine learning or somebody wants to do i don't know data analytics or whatever um how would you assess the the attributes of the storage that you'd need and what sort of solution what sort of uh, technologies could you could you look at using the criteria that 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 we sort of had defined in the white paper so, so that that seems like a that seems like a actually quite a good idea. Yeah, and and you could think of it as um, if the white paper that we wrote is storage one hundred and one, this will be storage one hundred and two. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Just just one warning. I think it's there's quite a lot of work involved in preparing this thing properly. And secondly, I think it could be controversial if we're not extremely careful. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I, w I would just kind of warn against sort of rushing into it and winging it because I think that could be dangerous. That is absolutely a great point. Hey, Luis, I remember you mentioned something there was a spot in October. I'm just thinking if we have a later spot, maybe we have more time to prepare for this. It's August, it's coming quickly. Yeah, we have to have an abstract by August 5th. And August 5th? Yeah, I, I think that's the date. Yeah. Uh, no, it's 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 August the twentieth. So the yeah, August twentieth is the date of the of the presentation, but I think August fifth you just have the abstract ready. All oh, right. Yes. A, yeah. yeah two, two or three weeks before we need to have the abstract. And did we decide on the format, Luis? Are we going to have a bunch of questions ahead of time? We wanted to have it be more interactive, or are we just going to do the presentation? What was the final decision on that? We, we haven't actually had a final decision. We can discuss it right here. Okay. Um, the the um, idea is it's mostly, I, I mean, I've done webinars before where um, they're pre-recorded, the, the presentation part, and then I go in and answer questions live after that. Um, we could do something like that, uh, where half of the time is a presentation. We could present also the paper we have. Um, and talk about, you know, the type of storage that we have, you know, kind of enhance more on the, on the paper and then we can get ready for questions in the end. I mean, that's another thing we can do. And then we can talk about maybe writing another paper for, for the next six months, which will be the one or two. You see what I mean? Yeah. I like I like that idea. We can use the webinar as, as kind of a, a launch platform for the next one for the next white paper. Yeah, I think if we have an hour, if I understood you correctly, we have an hour for the presentation and half an hour for questions or roundabout. Is that right? That's what seems that way. We can get more logistics. Uh, from so, uh, I remember when I was reading that thing you sent to me, Luisa. It says usually it's forty-five minutes presentation, but I think it depends. We can. I'm pretty sure we can change that. What I was going to say is, I think if we if we do have an hour-ish, I think that's enough time to do essentially uh, a kind of crash course in the white paper and then lead on to a, I'll call it like a decision tree.
kind of a presentation where we say here's here's the thing that we're trying to solve and here's a decision tree that we've sort of distilled out of our white paper um, to help you figure out what types of storage to look at to solve these problems and then we can present that and that might be quite a nice lead into a half hour q a session which could cover both it's just just a thought it seems useful and then that second half of the presentation would as you say be kind of like a primer for for the white paper 102 yeah yeah i, I think so I, maybe you know um if we had the presentation and we do the talk on the 101 and then we give only one example right and here and we can say like uh this is what we plan to do for the next iteration of another paper and here's an example of what we would like to do yeah and we kind of show and then that, that kind of like hooks them in you know and and then that goes we go into questions after that because and we can what do you guys think about that that style you just do one yeah that yeah that that that, that, that works that works um that sounds really good um Luis, do you, do you want to take a stab at um, yep. um, writing up an abstract and then maybe you just... got it. Excellent. Hey, Luis, a question for you. Uh, I actually attended the, the, you have a webinar, uh, uh, Portworks has a webinar yesterday. I attended that one. So it seems like a lot of people are ask, asking questions in the middle of the presentation, but you're saying that we can actually pre-record that? Oh, it all depends on the webinar style. Like oh, okay. Red Hat. When I was at Red Hat, we pre-recorded pre -recorded them. When I was at uh, CoreOS, we did them live. It, it oh, okay. all depends on, on the company and the equipment. I think okay. these webinars are live, so people oh, yeah. will, will have questions in between. Yeah, a lot, of quest yeah a lot of questions yesterday. Yeah, yeah which, which is good. That's yeah, fine. yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's better to have a presentation and just no questions. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people are interested. That's, that's great, yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. Um, oh, also, where, do, where should I send the abstract so we can discuss it? Um, should I put it on the Slack channel? Or is there a, should I put it publicly? Or what, what should we do? Um, I'll put it on the Slack channel, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll put a public uh, Google Doc on the Slack channel and I'll, and I'll, I'll link it and we can, I'll, I'll write it there. Brilliant. Fantastic, thank you so much. Um, so we've only got sort of about 10 odd minutes left. Um, so I just wanted to, to, um, to get some uh, volunteers for the next uh, couple of papers. We had previously identified two papers. The first one was we wanted to sort of write a, a one or two page paper um, to compare raw block stores, ephemeral disks, local disks, and, and, and disks from, from storage services or external services. Um, I, th I believe, Jing, that might have been, that might have been yeah. something you had proposed. Um, sure, uh, I can, yeah, I can help with that one. Cool. Do, so, so um, do you want to sort of be like the primary author for that and maybe put a skeleton together and uh, or, or, or a first draft together and then sort of share it and, and we can help contribute. Yeah, sure. Fantastic. Okay. Um, and then we also had um, another paper that, uh, that we were looking at where we, we sort of said we, we were going to look at the different attributes in the white paper and, um, and maybe document uh, different sections of to, to allow um, to allow end users to uh, look at uh, some of the some of the ways to test those those differences or to compare those differences. So we we kind of said um, performance might be a good place to start. Maybe availability might be another might be another option. Um, and we 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 said that we we would probably start with um, documenting. Um, some of the standard tools that people can use to to evaluate performance. Um, I'm 
actually sort of quite keen to to get involved in some of these performance um, performance options because it's kind of one of my one of my uh, pet uh, uh, projects anyway. But um, um, I'd love to work with somebody else on this too, if if somebody fancies joining. Yeah, I'd, I'd personally love to step back a little bit for this round and, and make some space for all the new um, tech leads and chairs to kind of take the lead on this next phase. Alex, I can I help you review. I only know a little bit of the performance. I've only worked on um, SPC1 uh, OLTP type performance analysis, but that's about it. All right. So. Um... Um, it, so, so I tell you what we could do. I, I could just, um, I could just ping you, and maybe we could have a, like a fifteen-minute call, do a bit of a brain dump, and I could start fleshing out a document, um, and then we can maybe get other contributors as, as required. Sure, that's fine. Awesome. Okay. Um, we discussed. What about, what about Sorry, go the on. Third, what about the third paper? We just kind of discuss, or going to discuss at the end of this webinar the 102 paper like what what or we suggest that, that uh, what storage to use with what app um, what suggestions yeah. maybe we can use the next meeting to discuss that if that's okay because that that feels like um, that feels like a, a more lengthy discussion oh yeah absolutely yeah and then there's the database one we spoke about earlier as well yeah. So, so the database one, I was going to reach out to um, to Sugu um, and see if uh, if if he can help uh, drive that. Um, you know, given that he runs a database company and project, so <laughs> he's probably best best placed for that. Yeah, I, th I think we should just be careful of um, making sure we get a sort of a balanced group of people there. <clears throat> not, not no no you know questions around Sugu at all, but he, as you say, his head is very much buried in one particular kind of database. Um, and uh, maybe we need another person to, to co-lead with him whose head is buried in completely different kinds of databases. <clears throat> yeah, that's, 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 that's a fair point. I'll, I'll have a bit of a think, and, uh, but if anybody has any other suggestions to who we could reach out to, please feel free to ping me. Um, and then Amy um, uh, added added a, another small agenda item around um, creating some branding and the logo and some swag for the six, um, especially for the next um, uh, the next coupon. Do you want to quickly talk yes. about that? Yeah, sure. It's very tiny. Um, there's a GitHub issue. It's over in the Slack. Let me go and put it over into the meeting agenda document, but basically your ideas would be lovely. Um, and we will get rolling on this. Does anybody have strong opinions about a logo or things that we shouldn't do? I, I, I wanted a unicorn and okay. fairy dust and, and glitter. Huh. <laughs> I understand. It should all be on a cape as well. So. <laughs> oh God, no capes. All right, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I think as as long as it doesn't look like a, a an oracle, um, you know, drum. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I knew this is where this was going to go. However, um, uh, uh, and, and to be clear, nothing gets oracle. It was more about the drum. Uh, oracle got big gold drums here in the Bay Area. That, that there was, I have nothing against the company. <laughs> Are there any conventions on this? Like, like, does this have to be like some animal or something or? Yeah. Just yeah. anything is okay. Um, uh, so right now we're taking ideas. I will go back towards our designer at CNCF um, and come and present you guys with a list of options. Um, we will bike shed it. It will be a great time. We will eventually move towards being able to have a poll with probably five or four finals. And then from there we will finalize and you can use it wherever you need to. <laughs> okay. Sounds Thanks. awesome. Well, you know, I just played out the process and the bike shed is very important as well. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Um, and then finally, for next meeting, we have Sheng from Rancher um, doing, who's going to be presenting uh, the Longhorn project. Um, and I think that wraps up today's agenda. 
there's, is, are there any other um, any other items anybody else wants to raise? Uh, it's a question. Yeah. Uh, the timeline of the sorry, the, I'm just asking the timeline of the of the papers. When um, do you want those papers to be done? So, I'll I'll ping um, I'll ping Luis on the on the performance one and maybe try and get a skeleton doc available for the next meeting. I don't know. Can you do? Do you think you can do that for the next meeting, or or do you want to push it out a little more? For the uh, I so next meeting is what two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. So yeah, I I think I started. Yeah, I'll see because I will be traveling next week. So. So it's maybe a little right. time, but uh, I will try. Yeah, I mean, you know, if we have to push that, we have to push that. We, we, it, it is what it is. So no problem. Okay, but I can definitely get started. Yeah. Okay. I think it'd be super useful if we could have all of these done at the very latest by uh, KubeCon San Diego. Uh, I would okay. hope that we would have them all finished before them, but um, we have run into that obstacles before. So yeah, as a, as a, you know, maybe we target like before that to have them finished mm -hmm. okay. yeah i mean what what I'd, what I'd like to do is you know e even if we just have like a skeleton document with some headings in it then we can then we can sort of corral some additional um help to 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 sort of contribute um uh and i think it's eminently feasible to do this before cube gun in, in in san diego so yeah, and that should be, yeah, we should have enough time for that. Yeah. Brilliant. All right. Thanks, Sorry, everyone. I have one question. Oh, good. Sorry, before we go. It's, Fire. Um, it's, uh, where can we find information if there, if it's available already or, or if it's not, and we can create it on the criteria to go uh, for a storage project to go sandbox and then to go incubator and so on. Oh man, you missed you missed all the first <laughs> half hour of the meeting. Oh good, 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 good. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Um, I think this this was all recorded, so maybe it's easiest if you just go back to the recording. That that's yeah. fine. That's fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. As long as it was discussed, that's all I wanted. So perfect. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks, everyone. All right. Take care. Bye. All right. Thank Bye -bye. you.